Hi there, it's Ruth at Artful Stampin'. Today I'm um, going to be showing you how I made this card here. Now, um, for the sake of time, I'm not actually going to make the card in front of you, but just talk through step by step how I've created this effect. Okay, so um, I've got the Dove of Peace um, stamp here. Now, I've deliberately not mounted the um, sentiment. I've deliberately um, mounted that onto some um, separate cling foam. Um, like cling foam that I've got so that I can actually use that as a, a sentiment on its own um, with, with other cards or, or just be specific in a different way uh, to how I'm using this. I've actually shot a video of how I've, I've mounted this or how I've got the sticker on here so um, do have a look at my other my channel for the, that video later on. Okay so um, in order to do this I've used Whisper White um, card and I stamped the image with the new archival black um, ink. It's this ink here. Okay, and then I painstakingly coloured it in this afternoon. I had a, a nice sort of 10 minutes just um, doing some really fab just colouring in. Um, it's quite fashionable and kind of a bit of a craze at the moment to um, be doing colouring in and I just thought this stamp just lends itself to that because it has some beautiful kind of intricate elements. Anyway so um, if I tell you what the colours are, um, I use Cherry Cobbler, uh, Real Red, Old, Old Olive and Tangelo Twist. Of course you know you can use the, whatever colours you fancy using but um, if you want to create this effect this is what I use. So if I bring this up a little bit closer you can see this is um, kind of what what it ended up looking like. Um, there we go. So I haven't actually coloured in the whole of the dove. I've deliberately left quite a little bit of white space um, and just, you know, just had fun colouring in those elements there. Okay, so then when I finished doing that, I used the new um, glue from Stamping Up, the fast tip glue pen and as far as I can tell I think that the glue in here is the same as our crystal effects. So um, I love crystal effects, it's great for using um, as a dec decorative element, I'm just going to grab it now actually on my, on my table, it's this stuff here, it's great for using um, as, um, I use them like as raindrops on um, flowers or using as a masking element and that is kind of what I've done here or to create a kind of a slightly shiny and raised effect so I didn't cover the whole dove with with this I just sort of picked out elements and um, the leaf the the little leaf there that he's got in his beak so I, I did the leaves there now just a word of warning, and um, this is a little tip, just be very careful when you're actually applying uh, the glue, because as you can see, I got a little bit of a, a, a splash there that I didn't realise until I actually started sponging colour onto this piece of paper. So you can see that I got a little bit of a splash, and also in this area here I ended up with a bit of a splash. And I have tried to kind of disguise it a little bit by just going over and over and over again and again with a pen. Um, but as you can see, it, 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 it sort of covers it up, but it's, it's not perfect. But there we go, that's, you know, that's the way it is. So I'm just passing that tip on to you. Also, the other thing I found is that when I was um, squeezing out the glue from here, sometimes little bubbles would form on the end of the, of the glue. So what's really helpful to do is maybe have a piece of scrap paper nearby and to actually squeeze the glue out a little bit until the bubbles stop forming before actually then applying to there. Then I found that if bubbles did form on um, on the art piece of work, I use the pe the lid of the glue, which has the little kind of needle poking out of it, that you then put back in the uh, nozzle to stop it clogging. But I just use that point there to try and pierce some of the bubbles that were forming um, on in the glue that's actually on there. Um, Sometimes I give it a little blow, to be honest, as well. But um, it's kind of a bit of a, it's a bit of a trial and error and a bit of an experiment. At the end of the day, it's you know, it's, if it's a new medium to you, then you know you're just going to have to play with it to get it right. Um, you know, like all new, you know, art 
materials um, you, you just have to play with them to, to really get the, the right effects that you want you want to get out of them okay so um, where was I so after I um, put the crystal effects on I obviously left it to dry so that was a few hours to be honest um, I kind of did I colored in this afternoon and then I've come back to this this evening so it's a few hours later so it maybe it's a sort of thing you could do overnight maybe if you wanted to do some you know batch coloring and then um, putting on the crystal effects and then leaving it to dry maybe you know it's, it's best to leave that overnight <laughs> so um, I then came back to it and then I thought oh what, what would I like to do and I really like the idea of just combining lots of different images um, to create a background so I cut out um, a, a mask from um, a um, like a sticky note so um, I've got a little tip for you and I've regretted not doing this myself that um, when I stamped and then started cutting out I should have cut out two sheets of the post-it note or the sticky note at once so that um, I then want to have two so once this gets this loses its stick I've still got another one so that's just a tip so the next time you create a mask cut out two or three if you can okay so I actually did even fussy cut round as much as possible I did actually fussy cut round the leaf but then when I um, did use it as a mask I found that I ended up with a white space there which I needn't have had to worry about because of, I applied the um, crystal effects um, on the leaf so um, I didn't need to actually mask that area off so again a little tip um, that if you're using the crystal effects it means that you don't have to be so kind of fussy cutting around um, all the little elements okay so um, as you can see I then placed my mask over the top of the dove and then I just kind of raided my um, Stampin' Up stamps um, for different elements that I wanted to use. Now, I have used all current stamps. Um, I, yes, I've used quite a few different ones, so I'll go through all the different stamp sets that I've used. So I was just reaching for everything Eleanor. Now, um, this stamp set has been around for a long time, and I was pleasantly surprised to find it back in the catalogue this year in the, in the main catalogue um, I've used this image here this lovely swirl which is just such a great useful image for lots of different things I mean it has lots of other great stamps in it as well but this is probably my most used as as you can see my most inked from workshops and things okay so I stamped that in cherry cobbler then I stamped um, with Oh no, sorry, that wasn't Cherry Cobbler, I stamped that in real red. Yeah, that's real red, so the swirl is in real red. So then in the... Oh no, before that, sorry, go back a step. <laughs> um, before I started stamping, I sponged the paper. So I um, used a bit of the Tangelo Twist, and then sort of basically went from light to dark. So I started with a Tangelo Twist, then add a little bit of um, real red, and then I added... The cherry cobbler kind of to the edges okay so right back to stamping uh, stamped the swirl in real red then I stamped the fabulous kind of hexagon uh, pattern from um, butterfly basics that was stamped in tangelo twist then I stamped the stars the lovely star image from the perpetual birthday calendar and you know you you might have got some other star stamps or you know you might choose to use whatever else but it's just about layering up images and textures um so yeah those are the stars and then in the real red i then stamped um the the splatters um in real red okay from gorgeous grunge and then i think that's pretty much it yes that's everything so then I took the mask off and voila, you then end up with that really lovely crisp kind of image there with all the lovely stamping around it. Okay, right, well I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's been a little bit different as in I haven't been actually creating something in, in, you know, in real time. But um, as you can imagine, this took a process of quite a few hours so I, it would have kind of been impossible to show that um, unless I did lots of fancy editing um, anyway thank you for joining me and um, please do subscribe if you like what you see and um, thank you if you've been subscribing already and following me it's really lovely to hear your comments and um, what you've been up to so um, yeah I hope you've been inspired and um, 
please watch out for more videos. Okay, bye.